In most cases, law enforcement will encounter suspects and offenders they have never encountered before. Instead, it's their own pals that need to be apprehended. The close-knit social fabric of a small town in which everyone's familiar with the lives of one another, including the members of the local law enforcement. This is one of the disadvantages of living in a small town. You know you ain't got a driver's license. Don't do this, please. I got to. Man, goddamn, Michael. Please. I got to. No, 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 listen to me. No. Please, just listen Sheriff to me. sent me. The sheriff. Sheriff, Captain, I mean, they've seen you driving, we gotta get you. Recent allegations made by the local sheriff suggest that Buck was driving a Chevrolet pickup truck, despite the fact that Buck does not possess a valid driver's license. Buck is in a confusing scenario considering that practically every law enforcement officer in the city is aware of the current state of his driver's license. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm just trying to tell you something. Listen, if you're listening, listen, listen tell me. The, the person that was driving this truck just jumped out of the fucking over there on goddamn Lake Morality and goddamn, I had no other way to get it here, buddy. I swear to God, I would, I'm not going to drive it no more. I you promise you. No, I got to. God damn, Michael, I please. 31 to 28, you 51 this way. That's great, oh, bro. I just passed it. You I, just passed him? Yeah, on see, on see, he he said, around, No, he didn't. I swear to God he didn't. Michael, I, I just swear to God, if you, if you listen to me, bro, I swear to God. I'm about to right now, sure. If he's stating someone jumped out behind the wheel. Yeah, and I'm trying to get my truck home. That's it. But, bro, I swear you to got, God, bro. You can't bro. get a driver's license in the state of Florida, dude. That's how bad it is. Because this is such a tight-knit group, rumors are swiftly disseminated, and Buck must approach this obstacle with caution. In order to protect his image and find a solution to this perplexing situation, he has many options. He may choose to argue with the sheriff, he can gather proof to demonstrate that he is innocent, or he could seek the backing of reliable friends or neighbors. Buck finds himself in a perplexing predicament, attempting to clarify the situation surrounding his friend's involvement with his truck. According to Buck, his friend initially took the wheel, but abruptly abandoned him near a lake, forcing him to drive back home as his only choice. However, the modern era casts a harsh light on his predicament. The police officer astutely points out that given the 21st century technology and connectivity, Buck could have easily summoned someone with a valid driver's license to come to his aid instead of taking matters into his own hands. Regrettably for Buck. I get it, but man, you still can't drive, bro. Pull it off the road and wait for someone has a valid license. Do not do that. What? Let's go. That's crazy, dude. Would you tell him? That, that no. Say that, uh, Let's no, go, no, Buck. No. Buck, I'm not playing this game. What do you mean? I'm, I'm not. Trying. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody jumped out. Oh, damn it! I'm hit on the wall foot. Get the gun. Man, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm not. Something. Ain't nobody jumped out, Buck. Get the gun. Kevin, did they stay not? Stay out of this, Kevin! Did they not? Kevin, back up. Kevin, you stay out of this. Did they not jump back out? Back up, Kevin. God damn, Kevin. dude. I'm, I'm telling you. respect when you're going to run from me like God that. God damn, I'm the law doesn't always take circumstances into account. The officer insists that, regardless of the circumstances, Buck's actions still violated the law. Understandably, Buck is far from pleased with this outcome, trapped between the strict legal reality and the practical constraints he faced during that fateful drive. I'm in this. this is, I don't give a fuck if you tell me about my mom or not. Leave my family out of this dog. I'm, I'm saying this. Would she be proud of you for sticking that fucking taser to me when I was not even resisting when you done that? Done that. You were resisting. the fuck out. What? You had me. Yeah, that's why we had each other in headlocks. Whatever. However, the pursuit was short-lived. Part of the struggle on the ground had to be cut, but the police reported that Buck resisted so hard that they had to deploy a taser to make him calm down, and the footage returns when Buck was fully restrained and handcuffed, adding yet another charge to his already fairly long list. And given how close everyone seems to be here, you just know this police chase is going to be the talk of the town. So my right brake light is out? Yeah. Or you got me to ask you what well, I'm asking you both. DCS. What? DCS. DCS. What's DCS? You don't know what Department DCS Department of Children's Services? Buck was placed in the patrol car and driven back to headquarters. He was so enraged that he made the trip back a really personal one. Buck was charged with driving without a license and resisting arrest. And now, our next case is also really interesting. The incident began innocuously enough when the officer pulled over a vehicle driven by a person identified as Petra Edgerton due to a broken brake light. However, what initially seemed like a routine traffic stop took a puzzling turn when the officer spotted something rather unusual, a police badge hanging around Petra's neck. So, Being a police officer. See, this is what's you're asking me all those questions. 
Right. So, if you're a police officer, you understand what probable cause is, right? So, what's the probable cause? Your right brake light's out. My right brake light wasn't out when you followed me out of the gas station. Yeah, it is. It's out right now. The car wasn't even on when you followed me out of the gas station. Doesn't matter. You're driving with a brake light out on the streets, so it's an no, equipment violation. You me out of the gas Strangely, the officer didn't recognize Petra as a fellow law enforcement officer, and the combination of a seemingly fake badge and a car with a broken brake light raised a red flag. Sensing that something was awry, the officer's instincts kicked in, and they decided to delve deeper into the situation. It was a moment of suspicion, prompting a thorough investigation into the mysterious circumstances surrounding Petra and the unexpected presence of that dubious police badge. As the encounter unfolded, the broken brake light issue paled in comparison to the officer's growing concerns. And you never see me. Right. So, are you a police officer or so are you not a police officer? So, because a black person walks into a store with a badge and a gun, it's an issue. That has because nothing to do with you being black. Are you a police officer or you're not a police officer? Not a police officer. You're not a police officer? No. So, why would you go into Quick Trip and get free food with your badge and gun? Because I'm an officer. You don't have to be a police officer to go in there. I've been doing it for 30 years. So you're not a you're it's not a certified not, police officer. It's not probable cause. It's a personal thing. It became increasingly clear that Petra's behavior was far from typical for an off-duty police officer. Her defensiveness, evasive responses, and overall closed-off demeanor raised significant red flags. A real officer would typically respond with clarity and professionalism, readily addressing any questions posed. I did not steal from drinks. I went up to the register, spoke to the guy that works there, and told him I had these drinks. So you're presenting yourself as a police officer with your badge and your gun on the side. Okay. Do you understand that? I do understand that. But my issue with you is, you've seen that. You say because you've never seen me before. So who do you work for? Me out of the store. Who do you work for? You who is DCS? The officer's intuition kicked into high gear, recognizing that something was amiss. The situation had escalated beyond a routine traffic stop, demanding a deeper investigation to unveil the truth. It was time to put an end to this enigmatic charade and unravel the mystery that surrounded Petra's peculiar behavior and the suspicious presence of that questionable police badge. Following a more in-depth investigation, both Petra and the genuine police officer Brandy Green eventually confessed to their roles in the perplexing incident. It is, you've told me you're a police officer or you're an officer for DCS. I've got DCS on the phone. They say you don't work there. So who's your supervisor? Brandy admitted to her involvement in the scheme, which resulted in her resignation from her position at the Department of Community Safety. Meanwhile, Petra came clean about her actions, revealing her attempt to impersonate a law enforcement officer. As a consequence of her impersonation, Petra now faces serious legal repercussions, including felony charges. Um, she was with her friend, Petra Edgerton. Brandy decided that she was going to give Petra her badge and her gun to go into Quick Trip and get some food. So I pulled them over for a broken tail light. Petra was driving. She had the badge on and the gun on. When I pulled them over, she identified herself as a DCS officer and then later admitted to not being a DCS officer. And your employee, Brandy Green, admitted to giving her the gun and the badge to go into Quick Trip to get the free food. So, uh, reached out for my lighter, slammed and nipped his ass. Cool. No, not really. Not really. No. Are you okay? Oh yeah, no, I'm good. Your car's fucked up. No, absolutely fucking lovely. Which I just fucking fixed. Obviously, Brooke and Scott are familiar with each other, and curiously, Scott holds nothing back when describing exactly how the incident went down. This crash, um, Birdie, is so come work it. Okay. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've worked a crash with one of us in it, so... No, he's not on duty. He's in his POV. I just didn't want there to be any, like, conflict of interest type issues. All right, that was it. I just want to make sure. All right, bye. Dang it, Birdie. If convicted, she could potentially be sentenced to up to five years in prison, a stern reminder of the gravity of her actions and the consequences of impersonating an officer of the law. Wait on his way. He's not coming. Black pants. Good? Walking home, but yep, I'm good. So, Birdie, you, you giving me some indicators? Oh. Listen, listen. Shit, woman. Listen, <laughs> Valdez is coming out just to... I'm not going to lie to you about it. She's on her way? Yeah, she's on her way. I'm not really comfortable with this whole thing at all, but I'm not going to lie to you about it. Oh, no. I, I don't mean to put you in that indie. Yep. From now on, you know how it goes. You can't consume anything, okay? 
Because right now you, you're being detained. Please don't make my life difficult. I would never do that to you. Okay. I, I'm very uncomfortable right now. And, and I apologize for putting you in that position. Are you on? Yes. Yes, I am. And I'm going to remain on for integrity. You know you can't smoke right now. Why? Because if I'm going to do a DUI investigation, it impedes it so you can't consume anything. I want to get that dog. That is a really cute dog. Fear aggression issue. You can always train a dog. You can't consume anything. You're killing me. Trying. It's too late now. One, two, three. Judging by this and the overwhelming amounts of evidence against him at this point, the officers thought it was safe to conclude that Scott had been drinking that night and decided it was time to put him in cuffs. Something he was far from happy about. There's things that we can do to fix this, but they have like fucking everything. It's got the hinge locks. This unexpected turn of events underscores the importance of upholding the integrity of law enforcement and the severe penalties associated with impersonation.